I'm just going to ask Jada to come up and take up the evening offer tonight. Let's give joyfully and let's entertain God with worship and praise. figure out which key that we're, that's what we usually do. We, we call it practice, but we're just trying to figure out which key we're going to sing this, the song on the next day. Oh, what a mighty God we serve.
Oh. 
I sometimes get confused. Anybody else? <laughs> but my God never gets confused. I got to thinking one time, uh, Brother Hurst, over, he was pastoring in Calus for a while, and he said, you can't surprise God. You can't surprise Him. You can thrill Him, and that blows my mind. The idea that the God of heaven, the Creator, James, he looks down and he sees me and the little things that I do for him. He doesn't need me. <laughs> he does not need me. I am a speck on a speck within a speck that he created a long, long time ago. And yet, whenever I do something that he has asked me to do, which is my reasonable service, by the way, as Paul would say, he says, that's my son. And it thrills him, and I'm so thankful for that. And he watches out for us. He has a way for each one of us, and our paths are supposed to go along in such a way that we encourage one another, we move each other along, much like water flows. Have you ever seen how water, it has, an, it has an effect on the rest of the water? I love fluid dynamics. I'm an aviation major. And as the water begins to flow, there's all sorts of different types of flow. And you find that oftentimes water that wouldn't generally flow in a certain way will move in order to flow in that way. And it becomes more and more powerful as it becomes concerted. You've seen it all run down your windshield and that kind of thing. And it all, it's got that weird flow and nope, I can't figure it out. But it, they follow one another. But whenever they get into a flow, you think about the power. All of that, it looks like rivers to me, little bitty streams. But you bring them all down together and you've got something like a huge river. We got the Macadavic here, but think Mississippi River. I've seen that before. That takes a long time to drive across on a bridge. You think of the Amazon River, right? The mighty Nile. And that's all from just coming together. And that's what we're made to do. We were made to come together to worship God. And He provides a way for us, and He clears that way for us. The Lord is my shepherd.
just how precious it was that not only are we not alone with, with God, we're, God's always with, with us, but you know, when we're together, we're not alone. And like Shannon was saying, it, the river is a beautiful picture of what the church should be. Just, you know, water, water fascinates me. And when we come together, we're like a uh, water that is flowing and, and water is powerful. Water is so, so powerful. And Shannon, I'm just echoing Shannon right now, but water, when it flows down, it, it will ruin things that are in its way. It, it will make new paths. It, it will, you know, it might not be the fastest moving thing. There are other things that maybe move faster, but sometimes water gets going fast. But even if the water is just a slow moving water, it, eventually that force of the water will push whatever is in the way out of the way. And that, that is a perfect picture of the church, I, I think, personally, because, you know, when we come together, when we're, when we're unified and we're moving towards one goal and, and one purpose and one mind, nothing can stop the church. Not, nothing could stop us. Not hell couldn't stop us. Man couldn't stop us. You know, the church has been persecuted for centuries and, and they still couldn't stop the church. Because when we recognize that I'm not alone, I'm always walking with God. But not only am I not alone in, in my sense of my relationship with God, but I'm not alone because I have brothers and sisters besides me. I'm thankful and I'm for the church. Man. I'm not just talking about the, the building. I love this building. It's a beautiful building. But I, I'm talking about the living, breathing body of Christ that we have. And I'm thankful for the church. Aren't you thankful for the church? But tonight... I. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, for a little bit, and this isn't my notes, but, you know, when I was just sitting down there, I just felt God put in my heart just to be transparent. And for a little bit, you know, last week, it was, it was so impactful on me. Uh, what Brother Alex, Kenny came and, and shared in the Word about, you know, ha having the Holy Ghost, but not only just for speaking in tongues, but walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's something that I've been getting convicted of a little bit more and more lately. And last week, it was just a, a confirmation with me that God has been convicting me. I don't know if he's been just, it's just me, but, you know, I just have this feeling like, you know, this, and I, and I know I've said this before, but I, it's really just moving within me that this isn't it. You know, that not that the church isn't in, and I'm not saying that, but what we have right now, this isn't all that we have. This isn't all that we're meant to be. This isn't all that we are, are, are supposed to have. That this isn't it. That God has more planned for the church. And, you know, and, I, and I've just been, I've been wondering, I've been studying, how do I get to the more? And you know, the only conclusion I, I, I've come to is being real and being faithful. And, and I, I believe, church, I believe that God has 
something special planned for this community. And I'm not just talking about a revival that comes and goes, but I'm talking about an outpouring and a harvest that we go and collect and it stays. We, we've had it. I'm not, I'm not criticizing people in the past. Don't, don't misinterpret me. I'm thankful for my elders and, and what they've imparted and, and, and how they labor. But, you know, revival before has come and had is gone. And I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. We all choose to serve God individually. You have to choose tonight. Am I going to serve God? You, you all have to make that active choice. Am I going to come to church? Am I going to pray today? Am I? So you have to choose. I'm not blaming ministry. But, you know, we've had revivals that have come and gone. But I believe God wants to shift us into something that is not just going to come and go. But I believe he wants to shift us into something that is going to last until he comes. I, I really believe that. And, it, you know, it's just resonated in my spirit so much that, you know, that God is preparing the church. That what we're, what we're doing right now is, and, and, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm, I'm okay with being wrong, but, you know, I, I just feel like God is preparing the church for something, something that we don't even understand. You know, and, and I, I, I believe and I claim that we're going to see backsliders come back. That I, I, I believe that we're going to see prodigal sons come back and prodigal daughters. Are, you know, we're going to we're going to the people that have once gone, and I, I believe God is preparing us. Just, you know, and I'll, I'll start getting into my message. But believe it or not, you know, we also have to be ready for revival. Right. We we talked about it before, and we've talked about it, but you know, and, and I've said it, and it's, it's just something that still resonates. Is why would God send a mighty revival in, in, into my hands if I'm not ready to work? You know, it's just reality. If I'm not ready to put in the effort, God knows that. God, God sees what I'm doing. There's nothing that, you know, I, I can do that is hid from God. God sees everything. He is everything. He knows everything. There's, there's nothing besides him and there's nothing without him. So, I, you know, I, I just got to be faithful and we got to be faithful in where we're at. And we got to understand, I'm, I'm going to get to it. We got to understand that. You know, we, we can do it. That despite what, what, the, what the town looks like or what our community looks like or what our world looks like, that God has called us. That God has chosen us for this day and for this hour, which like, like Shannon was saying earlier, this is a reasonable service. This is the thing that we were called to do. That We're called to come out of darkness into his marvelous light so we can draw people to him. So we're not, and, I, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not saying we're doing anything wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I believe we're progressing in the right steps. I, I, I believe that there's a spiritual growth that is happening under Pastor Gallon, and I'm grateful that I have leadership that I can submit to. That he knows what he's doing. That he he he's a faithful man of God. That you know, I, I, I love my pastor. I, I love him, and I believe that under his leadership that. God is preparing us for something mighty. But you know, I, and I'm just going to say this and I'm going to move on. I believe it will only happen when we truly realize that we are called for a time of this. You know, it doesn't matter who we are and we can all make the excuses that you know, I, I thought it myself and when I'm talking to people and because, you know, believe it or not, people, people always look at the worst in you. It doesn't matter. And, you know, so... Even though I, I, I'm different now and I still talk to people, they still see James back then. You know, they still see that. And I, I've made the excuse, you know, that, hey, you know, I, I pro I'm not claiming to be a prophet in this, but I, I, like a prophet isn't accepted in his own country. And, I, and I, I make that excuse for myself saying, you know, they're not going to accept me anyways, but how do I know that? You know, how, how do I know if, if they won't accept? How, how do we know if they're really not hungry unless we go, unless we try? And I, I believe, church, and I'm going to get into my ser sermon soon, but I believe with all my heart that God has something powerful and special for this church. Not just an experience uh, that is a one-time thing, like I said, that comes and goes, or a revival that just is here a little bit and goes a little bit. But I'm talking about the real deal. The, a, a book of Acts. Outpouring. And it's going to happen with you and me. Because we're disciples of the King. We're disciples of Jesus, each and every one of us. 
But tonight, I want to talk about something that I, I don't necessarily feel qualified to talk about because I'm not a, a psychologist, or, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the smartest person. I'm not going to claim to do that. And I don't have a a bunch of letters before my name, like PhD or all this stuff. You know, I, I, I'm in business college at NBCC, so I, I don't feel adequate. But I, I have to do what I feel God telling me to do, and I, I just want to talk about being okay, that I'm okay. That we have to understand that we need to be okay. Everybody say, I'm okay. I'm okay. We, we have to have that, that, I don't know how to put it, that understanding that we have to make sure we ourselves are okay. That we, before we go do anything else, and I mentioned it on Wednesday, but I, I just feel it so strong that the church in this hour needs to understand to, to take care of what's inside before we go outside. And I believe this is the direction that, that God is moving the church in. And I could be wrong, or I might be wrong, doesn't matter. This is just what I feel. But I believe that God is wanting us to know that we need to be healthy. And I'm not saying that we're not healthy, but I, I believe He's wanting us to understand the value of focusing on ourselves before we focus on them. And I'm not saying we don't focus on the world. I'm not saying we don't focus on revival. But I think what we need to focus on a little bit more sometimes is me being healthy. Me having a prayer life. Me reading my Bible. Me being filled up. Me being full of the Holy Ghost. Me having that continual walk with God that... Even when I don't want to walk, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk. Even when I don't want to pray, I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray. Even when it's been a long day and I don't want to read because I just want to go to bed, that I'm going to read. We need to make sure we're physically okay as, long, as well as spiritual, spiritually okay. You know, Brother Cisco, he's a very, very impactful man in my life, but he shared a message a while back at a men's conference and he, he was talking about being okay and, and being healthy and, and, and just activating what God has given you and activating your mind, activating your body and activating your spirit because that's what we need to do. You know, I think sometimes we, we, we neglect the physical because we don't, we don't think it's necessary and that we can function. But the truth is if we, if we neglect our bodies, we can't function the way that God wants us to function. If we neglect our mental health, we can't function how God wants us to function. You know, if we neglect our spiritual life, we can't function to the top of the ability that God wants us to function in. So if we could turn tonight to Luke 5 and 12 to 16, I believe that everything we, we do is wrapped up in Jesus and follows Jesus. I just want to read this poor passage of scripture. It's Probably very familiar to all of us, but it says, While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came to him who was covered with leprosy. When, Je when, he saw that, when he saw Jesus, he bowed down with his face to the ground and begged him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So he stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then he ordered the man to tell no one but commanded him, go and show yourself to the priest and bring an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But the news about him spread even more and large crowds were gathering to hear him to be healed of their illness. So there was a revival taking place. Jesus was focusing on people and, and we need to be focused on, on the sickness. We need to be focused on, on the disease like Jesus was. We need to be focused on that, but I think this last portion in this scripture gets skipped over so much and it just says, yet Jesus himself frequently withdrew, withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. He was taking all this time for all these people all the time, going up to people and healing them and forgiving them and setting them free, but then and we love to focus on that. I've heard lots and lots of, uh, of sermons, and I, I've preached sermons about healings. But, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I, this is probably the first time I've ever dedicated a whole sermon to just being okay. To just walking away from everything and saying, you know what? I, I, I've focused on them, but I need some me time right now. 
I need to make sure I'm okay. And, it, and if this is the king of glory, if this is God robed in flesh, taking time to withdraw from everybody and go into a secret place, go into a lone place and just make sure I'm okay. If he did that, how much more should I do it? He, he's God in flesh. He, he, he's the great I am. He's the almighty one. He's the, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He, he's the one who reigns forever. But yet in his flesh, he still took time to focus on himself. To make sure he was okay. And I just want to ask, you know, I want to talk about what being okay means. Have you ever asked someone, you know, in small talk how they were? And, you know, sometimes we're not actually mean, how are you? We're just talking. But you ask, hey, how are you doing? And they just say, I'm okay. And it's kind of hard to decipher what they mean, at least for me. I, I, I'm thinking, like, are you, are you good? Like, are you good okay or are you not so good okay? What, what is this okay you're speaking of? And so there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with just being okay. There's nothing wrong with just being on the in-between. It's not always highs and lows. Sometimes we're just riding right in the middle. And, and to be honest, I think that's the best place to ride. I think that's the, that's, uh, you know, I like being really happy. And I, I don't like, I'm not going to say I like being sad. I don't like the lows at all. I, the, the lows aren't my thing. But riding in the middle is fun. You know, you, you're just having a good time being okay. But, you know, some people always want to be great, but the reality is that sometimes we're not always great. So for in study for tonight, I looked up what being okay means and a lot of different responses came up. You know, there was video after video of what being okay means and, and how to use the word okay. And, you know, in, in my short time of being married, I, I, I've learned that using okay in texting can mean a lot of different things. I've learned that when I'm texting my wife and she asks for something, I say okay as an okay a y. I don't just respond K. If I respond K, I get in trouble and she's like, why are you mad at me? I'm, I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I, I just I was too lazy to write okay. But you know, so we have what is okay? You know, what, what, what does it mean if, if there's so many different interpretations that it, it, when you're texting, if you put OK, then, you know, that, that means something different than just K or OK, A, Y. I get really confused with all this. And, and I, I, I'm bad at it. But I, I know I looked it up. And this isn't something that I, I feel that I'm adequate to talk about, but I believe that it's important. And, you know, we see an emphasis on taking care of yourself in Scripture and it. You know, it might be controversial and as sad it is, but, you know, sometimes it's okay to put yourself first. It's not selfish or rude, you know. Jesus took time to put himself first. He took time alone, so we should take time alone also. But in my quick study, it became obvious that the general meaning of okay was just being safe and well. You know, I, I watched different videos of it and, and people were explaining, but... Generally, it's just they, they want safety and they want to be well. And, and the dictionary actually defines it as just being safe and well. And a, a popular saying has been around lately and has arisen. And it's just that it's okay to not be okay. And you know, well, that is true. And I'm not in disagreement with that statement at all. Sometimes it, it is okay to not be okay. But in that time of not being okay, we have to set our focus on how do I get out of this slope? How do I get okay again? How do I get safe and well again? How do I get in, in that good place again? We need to make sure that we're on the road to being okay. Because it's a long road if you're just always in your mind. And, and you're just always down that, that ditch of not being okay. And there are times like that, but we need to make sure that we're on the road to being okay. Because learning to be okay and learning to be safe and well and, and to be healthy spiritually and physically is a priceless thing that I, I can't do for you. That, you know, and as much as this is going to sound controversial, God can't even do it for you. You have to do it yourself. God can set the circumstance and, and heal your mind. But if you choose to say, no, I'm just going to focus on the bad and I'm going to focus on what's wrong. 
then you're just going to back, go back down into that, I'm not okay. But this is something that only, I, you know, it's controversial, but it's something that only you can do for yourself. Oh, only you can choose to wake up on a bad day and say, I'm going to be okay today. God can do all the things for you, but you still have to choose to walk in that victory. You know, we're, like the psalm says, that we walk through a valley of the shadow of death, but you have to be determined in your mind that even though I'm walking through that valley, even though I'm walking on that mountaintop, I'm going to make sure I'm okay. I'm not going to make sure I get puffed up on the mountain, and I'm not going to. I'm going to make sure that I don't get beaten down in the valley. I'm going to make sure I walk that line of being okay. And we need to be willing, church. If we're going to reap a harvest, we need to be willing to carve out time. To make sure we're okay. And, and I, I believe that you can see this in scripture so much to the point that God wants his people to be okay. So much that he said on the seventh day, you're, you're going to take this off and you're not going to do anything. You, you just rest and take some new time. You, you just rest and ha have a good Shabbat dinner. Just have a good Sabbath dinner. Just You don't have to do nothing. Just eat fish and, and live the dream. That, that sounds awesome to me. A, a day to just do nothing and eat fish. That what, what, a, what, a, what a dream day. But I believe that's how much God put an emphasis on being okay. That he created a Sabbath. And not only did he create a Sabbath in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we live in a continual Sabbath. We live in a continual holy day when, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. When, when we have God's Spirit in us, we're in a continual Sabbath every day. And the writer of Hebrews clearly points that out to us. So every day we ought to be taking time to make sure, hey, I, I need to be physically and spiritually okay today. When you wake up in the morning, I don't know your morning routine, but take some time to pray and say, God, help me be right today. I, I counsel me on what to do. Counsel me on where to go. Counsel me on how to be okay. And in Ephesians 2.10, I just want to emphasize this a little bit. It says, for we are his workmanship. Having been created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand so we may do them. But if we're going to do the good works, if we're going to walk that road, we have to be okay. So each one of us has a call on that. Only we can do. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm not saying this arrogantly, but Jashel can't be me for obvious reasons. I, I am six feet tall and, and she's four foot eleven. She struggles to put something on, on the top cover and I don't. So for obvious reasons, she can't be me, but I also can't be her. I, I, I can't be Shannon. I, 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 can't, I can't be any of you guys. And our callings aren't the same. Our, our call to discipleship is different for each and every one of us. And when we see that in Scripture, Peter was a leader and Jesus told him, protect my sheep, keep my sheep, feed my sheep before he left. But Matthew was in charge of, of writing a lot of things and accounting things and doing stuff. And, and Judas was in charge of the money. And, and, and John was in charge of doing everything different things. He was called to be you know, close to Jesus. He was the one who leaned on Jesus' breast at, at the supper, the, the last supper that we know about. They each had a different role and a different calling. And, and some of us, you know, we're called to be a disciple of Jesus into the body of Christ to maybe be a hand. Maybe your calling is to work and, and be, in a, be a hand, a, a hand that helps out, a, a hand that stretches or a hand that heals it. And that's fine because you, you do that. Maybe you're called to, to be an eye or a foot. And, and Jesus put it, put it this way in the Gospels. He didn't say, oh, the eye needs to be the foot or the foot needs to be eye. And they're not, they don't become jealous of one another because they work in unity to perform as the body. So we need to learn that I have to be okay and I have to be okay so I can function in my calling. So I, I, I can function as a true, living, breathing disciple of Jesus Christ. 
I believe that when we understand that to the fullness, I believe that when I understand it to the fullness, that it will it'll transform our lives and, and transform our town and, and transform this church. And I, I believe it will be a radical transformation that God does when we understand that the value of me being okay, the value of me being healthy. And some tips from psychologists that I found online, I'm just going to read a couple. And the, the first one is, let yourself feel your feelings. It's okay to feel things. You know, I'm not, I'm not going on a woe is me, but you know, sometimes as a man, I, I, I get in my heart shell and I, I say, I can't feel that way because I, I got to man up and I, I got to do that. But you know, we have to be honest with ourselves or, or even if you're a lady, you also feel like that. There's been times that I, I've talked to my wife, especially now when she's pregnant, I'm not trying to embarrass her. She knows that. But she's like, I shouldn't feel this way because it, it's a foolish thing. But it, it's okay to let yourself feel that way, even if it's foolish or if it seems foolish. Because obviously if you're feeling something, it's not foolish to you. So it's okay to feel stuff. Don't run from a difficult or uncomfortable emotion. Instead, learn to sit and give yourself space and experience it. I'll be honest, in December, I when I had some health issues or whatever it was going on, I, I really struggled in my mind. And I, I've never struggled mentally like that before. I, I know I'm not saying this all look at me, I'm so tough. But, you know, I never struggled with depression really before. I, you know, I had down days, but I, I, I could never say that I was depressed. I, you know, I never felt anxiety. Like, you know, I, I never really worried. I was... I was the guy that if he said, hey, jump off the bridge, I was jumping off the bridge without checking the water because I was like, well, you just got to do it. I, I, didn't, I just didn't feel anxiety that much. I didn't worry about things. I didn't, didn't struggle, uh, you know, looking at all these things. But when I, when I went through that time, I had to realize, hey, I, I actually got to process this because maybe I felt it before, but I, I just pushed it off. But it's only, I had to learn that it was okay for me to feel that way. And I'm thankful for my wife that helped me learn to deal with my feelings and, and learn to be okay. And I'm thankful for God, honestly, that brought me out. But we need to understand that we need to accept how we feel and learn to grow in that. So, you know, if you feel angry, I used to feel angry. So I had to learn to not get angry so much because I, I just couldn't blow up all the time. It's not healthy. It's not good. So you have to let yourself feel so you can move through that. The next thing that they said is be kind to yourself. You know, this is something I think we all struggle with, if we're being honest. You know, we have, you know, we have a lot of patience sometimes with other people, but not with ourselves. You know, I'll be honest, if I see others make a mistake, I have as much grace for them. But if I make that mistake, I tell myself, James... You're a fool. You're just going to go to hell. Why do you even bother? Just I, I, I can beat up on myself so easy, but I have to learn to be kind to myself. I have to learn to be patient with myself. I have, you know, in a church, as, as a church, we're going to have to learn that, hey, we don't have it all together. You know, when, when new people start coming in, and they're going to come. You're going to say some things wrong. You're going to do some things wrong. You, you might not be the best role model all the time, but be patient with yourself. Now more than ever, it is important to show kindness to ourselves. Now this means permitting we, we to feel different emotions without thinking we're foolish or stupid or having self-criticism. You know, it says here, cry if you need to. Get additional rest if you need to. But develop strategies to become comfortable in yourself and be kind to yourself. And the next one is be honest with others. And this doesn't mean you have to tell all your dirty laundry. You know, there's just some things that are better left unsaid. There's some things that, you know, I, I, I've experienced that I'm never, ever going to let it. Just because they're between me and God. And we all have those things that go through our mind. Or, or, or things that have happened. Or things that we've done. That you know we're just never going to let out. We're that, that's just between us and God. And be honest with others about how we are feeling. Church this is important for us. We have to learn to be vulnerable with one another. We have to learn to when we're not okay. We have to learn to walk up. 
to our brother and sister and say, hey, can you just pray for me for a little bit? Hey, can you just talk to me a little bit? Because I, I, I'm going through something and I need somebody. We need to learn to be honest with others so we can help ourselves and so eventually we can help others. If we're honest with others, it will mean that they can feel a transparency and an openness to be honest with us as well. So be honest with others. And they said, remember, no emotion is permanent. It says anger and sadness, just like happiness and joy, come and go. Let yourself experience emotions and learn to just allow them to pass through. And it talks about strong feelings are, are a part of the human experience. And this is true. Of, you know, there's nothing that you feel that hasn't been felt. There's nothing that, uh, I'm not going to feel an emotion that you've never felt. And you're not going to feel an emotion that I've never felt. And that's why we can, we can learn to be together. Because there may be times that I'm going through something that I've never gone through before. But you have. And, and like when you're learning to drive or like at work. When, when you're learning to do the job. Sometimes you have to rely on the, on the senior people. The people who have been there and done that. They have bought the t-shirt. They, they know how to do the job. They know how to get through the circumstance. So we need to, you know, understand that we need each other. That we all feel the same things. That we all bleed the same color. That we all essentially are the same. We're not the same in, in, in personalities or identities or whatever you want to, you know, if you, however you want to categorize yourself as. It, you know, it doesn't matter that Chichelle is a Filipino or I'm a Canadian where we bleed the same color. We feel the same things. We both respond to love. We both respond to food. We, we both respond to music. And that's like all of us. You know, I, I asked somebody, they were, they were working in the Native American and, with a, and going in and, and, and working in them. And I said, how, how do you reach a different culture within your own country? And they said, the one thing that you'll learn in ministry and being a Christian is that there's one thing that everybody in the world will respond to is love. There's nobody in the world. That, and I, I've been with hardened prisoners that they've seen things and done things that I couldn't even imagine. But when you walk in there and you show them the love of God, they respond to it. Because we all feel the same feelings. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be okay. We all want to be loved at the end of the day. And the last thing to remember that they said is, do not pretend that everything is okay when it isn't. You know, it goes back to being honest. You know, don't, don't, don't act like, you know, you're on top of the world if you're not. Just be honest with people. Tell them. And you know, well, in the pursuit of being okay, I just want to say this. And you can go to my next slide. Is we're only okay if we have Jesus. This is the only way that we will truly be okay because you might live the best life on earth. But without Jesus, you will never truly be okay. And maybe, maybe you might be fine here, but I promise you there is an earth and a, an eternity coming. If you don't know, and I'm not just talking about having experiences with Jesus. I'm talking about having a relationship in a depth where it's not like in Matthew 7, 21 where he says, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I don't know you. You did all these things. You experienced my blessings. You experienced my power. But I don't have a clue who you are. We need to understand that the only that way that we're going to be okay now and for eternity is if our hands are with the master, is if the master's arms are wrapped around us and if we're sheltered in the hands of God. That, that is the only way we will be okay. The only way that we will ever experience true peace and true freedom like the song says is if we have a little talk with Jesus. That is the only way. It shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that the only way to be okay is to be with Jesus. But, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, I, I, I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a guy that wants to push fear. But there is a hell that is waiting. You know, there, there is 
You know, the Bible explains it that it's a large in its borders every day. You know, it was only created for the devil and his angels. But there's been rulers and rich people who have oh, had okay lives. That now, I imagine, wish that they would have known Jesus. They, they wish they would have taken the opportunity. But the only way to be eternally okay. The only, and you know, we, we have, and sometimes I, I think we tiptoe around the, the subject of eternity too much now. But it is real. You know, one of my favorite acronyms that I've read, it was alive, actively living in view of eternity. Because it, it, eternity is going to be a very long time. It, it's going to be, I don't want to spend a day in hell. I can only imagine the first day, like, and I'm not trying to get people worked up uh, about people that have died and gone, but I, I can only imagine that first day walking into an eternal torment. Knowing that there is no way out. I can only imagine being Lazarus as he cried out from the void. Just give me a little bit of water. Just, just, just wet my tongue a little bit because the flames are too hot. I can't imagine being that. Nor do I want to imagine being that. But what I'd rather imagine is, is me knowing my Jesus so much that when, when eternity comes, whether it's from his coming or when I breathe my last breath, I want to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. That is the only way we'll be okay. If you hear depart from me, that's it. There's no turning back. So today, more than ever, as the return of Jesus is drawing close. If you don't believe, I'm not going to say, I, 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 I have opinions. I'm not going to say my opinions about how, how close I think we are. But what I believe that we're seeing is signs of the end coming. We may not, you know, it's debated. We may not be in the very end, but we're all aware of what symptoms are now. And, and what we're experiencing right now are symptoms that the end is coming. And it is coming very, very soon. You want to talk about plagues and pandemics that are happening. Whether you want to believe it or not, they're announcing another pandemic that you know, the, who just made it a global emergency for monkeypox. This is more, more emergencies that we've had in three years. Whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to say it's fake or not, I'm not here to debate opinions, but what I'm saying is the world is shaken from plagues and pandemics. And, and just the other day I heard, and, and you know, you can, we can believe conspiracy theories, we can do all that stuff. I'm not, I'm not here to talk about opinions. But even the other day I heard there's a French fry shortage coming. That there's food shortages that are happening in all over America. That, you know, cattle, for whatever reason, is it, it, dying. You know, there was someone in the States, 3,000 of these cattle. That's, it's, it's looking like there is a potential famine coming. Earthquakes are happening a, a lot Maybe not in, in a lot of different places. They're still in, in continual places, but they're starting to happen on larger magnitudes. There was just an earthquake in the Philippines that ruined almost the whole place that it hit. So what, at the very least, what we are seeing is signs and symptoms that the end is drawing close. That the end is very, very close. And we need to be okay with Jesus. And, and, and you know, we need to be a part of the kingdom of God. We need to understand. But if we could just turn to Mark 8 and 34 to 36. I just want to talk about, you need Jesus. And it says, then Jesus called the crowd along with his disciples and said to him, if anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself. You have to let go of your ego. You have to let go of your will. Let go of the things that you want to do. Because God's going to tell you to do some things that you necessarily don't want to do. They're best for you, but you might not want to do them. But it says he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But ever, whoever loses his life for the sake of and for the gospel will save it. 
This is where it is. For what benefit is it for a person to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his life? What benefit is it for you to enjoy the pleasures of right now? In North America, we're a very today people. We're a very right here, right now. But that really wasn't so in Bible times. In fact, a, a common Jewish greeting was Maranatha, which just means our Lord coming. Our, our king is coming because they were constantly living with the recognition that, hey, this isn't it. This, this isn't all that there is, but there is an eternal place that is coming. There is an eternal home that is coming. There is a place that I am going to spend eternity. And I need to be ready for it. So what, what, would it, what would it profit us? What would it benefit me to go and enjoy some things of the world that aren't godly? Just to forfeit my own soul. Hell is too long to just enjoy a moment of sin. It's way too long. You know, I, I don't want to see anybody go to hell. And I'm, talk, I'm talking about clearing the board. Like, I, I, I hope everybody finds Christ. And in fact, I often tell people, you know, they ask me, what, what's your opinion of a Christian? Like, what, what do you think is a Christian? I, I, I have, it's my favorite answer. People don't like it. But I say, if you go to heaven and you see that Hitler somehow made it, or, or that the murderer down the street somehow made it, or that the rapist down the street somehow made it, or, or the rich person that you didn't like, or, or, or the terrorist that you thought was evil, or, or the person that you just thought would never make it. If you go to heaven and you see that they made it and you're mad or upset by it, you're probably not a Christian. And I would argue, just like Shannon said, you're in the wrong spot. And I would argue if, if you would get upset by it, you probably won't even have the chance to see it. It's just, just my opinion. But going on, Psalms 37, 25 to 26, it says, I have been young and now old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. The only way to be okay, the only way to walk with God, the only, the only way to have your needs met is to walk with the king. Because the, the writer has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. God sees, you know, me and you, children of the king, begging for bread. But he is merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. In Isaiah 40 and 30 to 31, it says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. You know, uh, people aren't going to be okay all the time. You know, the normal people aren't, aren't always going to have it together. But then it says, but they that wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They, they, they shall renew, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to twist it, you know, don't, don't stone me, but they shall renew their strength and be okay. That, you know, they, they may be, may not be able to do much right now. They, they may be at that time that, you know, they can't run anymore, but they will, shall mount up as wings, as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. They will be okay. The only way to be okay is if you're willing to have a relationship with Jesus and wait on Him. And have Him renew you. And you know, sometimes, someone told me this, sometimes we, we think of waiting as just a way to God. Touch me. But it's not what it is. I, 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 don't, I don't believe that's what it is. Sometimes you just wait in the hallway, yes. But sometimes when you're waiting, you've got to be a waiter. You've got, you got to say, God, where do you want me to serve you? What, what do you want me to do today? What, what are you looking to order for me today? Well, where, where do you want me to go today? That's what waiting is. You know, you might think it's twisting it, but that's my opinion. Anyways, moving on. Matthew 6 and 25 to 34. And I'm coming to a close. This is my last scripture. But it says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. You know, don't, don't, don't fret. Don't, don't get anxious. Don't, don't make it a big deal that, you know, don't, don't think about everything and be stressed out, but just be okay. But it says, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. 
What you aware? Isn't there more to life than food and, and more to the body than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you? Aren't we? The, the body of Christ especially. More valuable than they are. And which of you by worrying can add even an hour to his life? Why do you worry about the clothes? And think of the flowers of the field. They, they grow they, they, they grow and they do not work or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was clothed like one of these. And if this is how God clothes the wild grass, which is here today and tomorrow is tossed into the fire to the heat, to the heat, to heat the oven, won't he clothe you even more, you people of little faith? He's not saying that just the disciples are of little faith, but he's saying if you're worrying about all these things, if, if you're focused on, on how you're going to do it all, then you're, you don't have the proper faith in God because he can take care of you. But then he says, so don't worry, saying what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the uncovered, un un unconverted pursue these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But above all, pursue his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So then do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry, will, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own. Learn to trust in God and be okay. If you put seeking God ahead of everything else, if you put seeking Jesus and seeking his kingdom, and you can study what his kingdom is in scripture, that his kingdom is not, you know, all this stuff is not, his type of religion isn't all this stuff, James says, but his religion is pure and is undefiled. The kingdom is undefiled. It's taking care of the widows. It's taking care of the orphans. It's taking care of the homeless. It's, it's taking care of those who are, who are needy. It's going out and, and helping people. It's, you know, it's all these good things. That's what his kingdom is. That's who he is. And we need to have the understanding that being okay is priceless. And the only way that we will be okay is if we have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. This is how to live being okay. There is no other way to be okay but a relationship with God. Seeking Him and His kingdom. And if we're going to move into what God has for us, we have to put a premium on being okay. We have to say that whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to be okay. That even no matter what I walk through, no matter what God tells me to go through, no matter where I go or how, how stuff happens, I will be okay. Because this church will become a hospital. I, I believe that, they, you know, as much as there is hospitals, I'm not going to say we're in doctors and stuff, but I believe that sick people are going to come in. That people who are hurt and wounded are going to come in. And, and if we're not okay, if we're sick on our own and, and not functioning on our own, how are we going to help them? Right. But like Jesus did, he took time for himself to go into the wilderness and, and to be okay. You know, there is a world that, that they are hurting. They are struggling. They are going through hell and they're going through it again. Because they don't have Jesus. But you and me, we're on the other side. That We have the peace that passes all understanding. But they don't. So we need to be okay that we can help them. They need us to be okay, church. More than we need to be okay, they need us to be okay. You know, more than you need to be okay, the, the lost loved ones you have, they need you to be okay. They, they need you to be praying. They need you to be reading. They need you to be being the influence in them. They need you to be okay physically and spiritually. And if we could stand, I'm, I'm closing. You know, it's not a high moving, high voltage service, but I, I believe that God is, 
is doing something much deeper in this day and this hour that is something that we can't even comprehend. I believe that he wants to take us to a place with him that we've never been before. I believe that the people in here right now, you know, you're committed to God. And I believe that God is desiring to pull you closer. You might think, well, I've been serving God for so many years. How could I possibly get closer? But let me tell you something. You haven't even scratched the surface of God. You haven't even made a, a, a dent or, or a mark in all that God is or all that he has. Like it says in, in, in the Bible, I has not seen. And I know that this is speaking about eternity. But I has not seen nor have ear heard the things that God has planned for his people. We don't even know the half of it. But church, let's pray. And if you want, you can come to the altar. I'm finished. But... I hope that we put a premium on being okay. I hope that we put a premium and a value and understand that we need to be all right. If we could just pray, just ask God that he'll reveal things in us that maybe if we're struggling with or, or maybe that we have faults because we all have faults. This should be our prayer always. God, help me to be better. Amen. You know, that's my prayer every day. I'm not boasting and saying, oh, look at me. I'm such a... I have to pray, otherwise everybody would hate me. You know, my wife sees me on the days that I don't pray as much. And as she knows, you can just ask her. It's not a very good day for anyone. Uh, um, I'm ready to chop someone's head off at, at just a given moment because I, I just need God. But every day we have to say, God, can you make me better? Can you help me to be okay? So let's just pray. Jesus, I come before you tonight. And God... I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. I thank you for how you're moving. I thank you for everything that you are. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to understand, to put a premium on being okay, to understand that being okay is, is priceless. And like you withdrew to the wilderness to take time and pray, God, I pray that you will call us to withdraw from everything every once in a while and, and just make sure that we're okay and, and just pray to you and just talk with you. Lord, I pray that you'll help us have, to have an understanding that we are each called God in, in, in an individual, in a special way. God, I pray that you will show us our callings, God, that you will show us where we fit in the body and that you will allow us to do the good work that you have planned for us. God, I pray that you will continue to draw this church deeper, that you will continue to move in this church, God, and draw us to a depth of you. Call us into the waters like you wrote, like, like this Roman scripture, God, that you call them to the ankles and call them to the waist. And then you call them to the point that they had to swim and, and the waters had full control. God, I pray today that you will call us to the place that the spirit of you that the Spirit of God has full control. Lord, we ask this all in your precious name. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen.